Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. trust in you. Mercifully accept our prayers, and because in our weakness we can do little that is lasting without you. Give us the help of your grace, that in keeping your teachings we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. Our first lesson is a reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an unhabitated salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart, to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray Psalm 1 as we sing. Oh. 
Our second lesson is a reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Coming down off the mountain with them, he stood on a plain surrounded by disciples and was soon joined by a huge congregation from all over Judea and Jerusalem, even from the seaside, towns of Tyre and Sidon. They had come both to hear him and to be cured of their diseases. Those disturbed by evil spirits were healed. Everyone was trying to touch him, so much energy surging from him. So many people healed. 
Then he spoke. You're blessed when you've lost it all. God's kingdom is there for the finding. You're blessed when you are ravenously hungry. Then you are ready for the messianic meal. You are blessed when the tears flow freely. Joy comes with the morning. Count yourself blessed every time someone cuts you down or throws you out, every time someone smears or blackens your name to discredit me. What it means is that truth is too close for comfort and that the person is uncomfortable. You can be glad when that happens. Skip like a lamb if you like, for even though they don't like it, I do and all heaven applauds. And know that you are in good company. The creatures and witnesses have always been treated like this. But it's trouble ahead if you think you've made it. What you have is all you'll ever get. And it's trouble ahead if you're satisfied with yourself. Your self will not satisfy you for long. And it's trouble ahead. If you think life's all fun and games, there's suffering to be met, and you're going to meet it. There's trouble ahead when you only live for the approval of others, saying what flatters them, doing what indulges them. Popul popularity contests are not truth contests. Look how many scoundrel preachers were approved by your ancestors. Your task is to be true, not popular. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. When we gather each Sunday, we read a lesson from the Hebrew Scriptures, a psalm, a reading from the New Testament, and then a Gospel reading. Sometimes the Scriptures speak so loudly to me and directly, but then most of the time, I guess I just heard it and I've had to read from the lectionary, and sometimes, honestly, I'll look at the readings and I'm like, who put these together? I can't even find a thread or anything that's common. And again, it could be my over familiarity with the readings, or maybe I've had a bad or tough week. Today's gospel is commonly known as the Sermon on the Plain. It's different, if you notice, in Matthew's Sermon on the Mount. Both speak of the blessed or the happy. Blessed are they, happy are they. Both provide Jesus, or both provide Jesus takes that the accepted standards of the day. He takes them and he turns them upside down. And that's what caught my eye and my heart today. Imagine with me, if you will, that you're one of the first to hear these words in Jesus' day. The people that Jesus calls happy, the world calls miserable. Blessed if you lose it all. Blessed if you're hungry. And not just hungry, you're kind of starving. Blessed if you're grieving and mourning deep loss. The people Jesus calls miserable or wretched, the world would call happy. Woe are you. That's what the NRSV and some of the other translations use. Woe are you. But I used um, Eugene Peterson's The Message. I like it. He says, but there's trouble ahead if you think you got it all made. 
flow if you're satisfied with yourself. Yourself will not satisfy you for long. And woe to you if you think life is just all fun and games. There is suffering to be met. No one is immune to sickness or death or difficulties in this life. You're going to meet up with it. Many of us have. We've come through the other side because of our hope and faith and trust in God. It's not easy. But we've been there. I don't know if you've ever been really hungry. And there are times that I have to admit that, you know, if I'm at the happiest place on earth, it's not Disney World, it's my home. At least I try to pretend that the happiest place in the world is my home. But sometimes you have to deal with some difficulties there at the happiest place. 2843 Gypsum Circle. Last Sunday, I shared the abbreviated story of Millard and Linda Fuller. Millionaires, by the time they were in their 30s, they had everything money could buy. But they found themselves empty because they'd only served themselves. Jesus' words today are revolutionary back then as they are today. How many of you, I'm gonna raise my hand, how many of you ever had buyer's regret? Have you, have you had buyer's regret? Bruce, did you raise your hand or you just never had regret? Bruce is always right, by the way, except one time, but I'll tell that story to y'all later. <laughs> but we've all had buyer's regret. We live in such a disposable society and we've been doing it for decades. We buy more thinking that it'll make us happier or these conveniences will make us happier. I'm so old now, I like it because I like to say that now, it's like, I'm so old now. I remember the TV repairman coming to grandma's house and he's pulling out all these tubes and he pulled the back of the TV off. Remember, how many of you remember the old tubes? Man, times have changed, haven't they? Now, if your flat screen goes out, you just throw it out, and you go buy another one. You don't even think about getting it repaired. But I have a neighbor that he actually repairs flat screen televisions, and he ships them to his father in Poland and resells them. So if any of you have a TV that's going out, let me know. I'll take it to Erasmus. And I've done this like everybody else. We try to wear the latest style with our clothing. Some of us, uh, we can't have a new hairstyle, but those of you who are concerned about hairstyle and color, it's important to us. But everything wears out and the gray grows. And the world tempts us and tells us we need the newer, the latest, the shiniest, or the most expensive. And this, that wonderful, wonderful cultural theologian, George Carlin reminded us that for many, life only consists of collecting stuff and more stuff. And when we die, nobody wants our stuff. Jesus is challenging us all in his words in Luke and where do your priorities lie? That's at the basis of what he's talking about. Where, where do your priorities lie? Is it in pleasing God or pleasing ourselves or others? I have visited and worshipped in places in Mexico, the Philippines, Bolivia, and the West Bank and Israel. What I noticed was that the people did not have a lot of stuff, but wherever I went, they put their best out for me as a stranger. In some places, they even put out their best silver. Do 
Now, I'll, I'll have to agree that hospitality and culture has changed somewhat. It's different. You're probably not going to put out your good silver for your NFL party tonight. But it made me wonder, do I, do all of us, do we give our best when we're showing hospitality? Showing the same love and kindness to family, friends, and even the stranger. Jesus challenges us with what will truly satisfy us or give us the most fulfillment. Jesus says that the most fulfilled lives are those who love God, love their neighbors, and love themselves. For me, it's a constant challenge. How do I love God, neighbor, and others in those choices that I make in life? I don't always choose God or others. Sometimes I choose myself over God and others. But that's part of the Christian life. That's part of following the way of love. We will always be constantly challenged at times. But I find that when I don't make the best decisions is when I'm tired and grumpy or I'm just too rushed. I had that experience Thursday. My nine o'clock shift was over at the hospital. I got paged. We have a patient who needs prayer. And the family member, they need to, they're, they're going in for emergency surgery and could you come back? It's like, well, we don't, prayer isn't an emergency. I wasn't happy. I got paged a second time. They said, well, it's really the patient that wants you to pray. Could you come back and pray with them? Okay, I turned my car around and I parked the car in the garage and then I had to walk in the cold and then I had to go check myself in and then I walked over the emergency department and said, oh, they already went to, to PACU before surgery. Okay, so I walked over to PACU. I met God there. I met God in the midst of my tiredness, in the midst of my, I don't want to do this. I met God there. 91 year old patient, most alert 91 year old I've met in a long time. And we had a wonderful conversation. He had great faith. His daughter was there, his favorite daughter who was there at the time. She was the middle child. I said, I'm the neglected middle child too. And we prayed. And he said, could you pray for my wife? She knows I'm here, but she doesn't understand what's going on. As I left that place, I realized I was more concerned about my sleep and my rest than the people that God had for me, that person that God had for me that night. I kind of ate crow. You see, the world seldom encourages or invites us to think of others. Maybe mostly during November and December. The world tells us, oh, it's time to give, and we go into that automatic giving mode. Jesus challenges us to live lives of love and not just mere consumption. Jesus challenges us to live lives of humility and service and not pride and mere self-satisfaction. Jesus challenges us to live Reminding ourselves that words and actions can bring hope and life. All I hear the world inviting us into 
as words of actions of oppression and fear. I wish I had been there the first time to hear those words, to take on the shock. Because what Jesus is saying, he needs you and me to be the hope and light and life in a world that is full of fear and ignorance and hoarding. It's the kingdom, folks. We are citizens of two kingdoms. And I want to show God's kingdom to more people than ever before. We cannot hoard God's love because God loves, compels us to serve and to give generously, to care, to get involved, to engage. So I want you to hear those words. Take this home, read the gospel again, but be happy. Be blessed as you follow the way of Jesus. Amen. 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 Let us stand as able and affirm our common faith as we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, the all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. God not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified. Who has spoken through the prophets? We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Holy One. You have created us with the ability to choose between life and death, blessings and curses. Help us to reject the advice of the wicked or sit with the scoffers. And by your grace, empower us to put our trust in you. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. We pray for those who put their trust in themselves instead of in you. Help us all to trust in you and make us a community of healing and reconciliation for all. In our parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Paul Van Duzer, Margaret Watts, and Mike and Sandy Whalen. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. We pray for those who put their trust in princes and politicians and find themselves deceived and misled. We pray for our leaders in government, finance, and business to look to your teachings to bring equity and justice for all people. Help us not to be satisfied by easy answers, but look for solutions and lasting changes for the good of all. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, 
whose trust is the Lord. We pray for those who are poor, who hunger, who weep. Help us to find ways to ease the burdens of those who need help, food, shelter, or more. Make us instruments of your peace through our giving and service to others. Blessed, Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. We pray for those who are making poor choices in their lives. May they turn to you for guidance. Be with abusers, the violent, the addicted, and the troubled-minded to find ways to transform their hurtful energy into healing energy for themselves and others. Help all who work for the mental health in our communities. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. We pray for the trees, for the rivers and streams, and for all your creation. Turn us from our exploitive ways to help you renew the earth. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. We pray for all who are in need of your healing and compassionate touch. Be with those on our intercession list, especially remembering Frankie, Alan, Sandy, Adam, Kathy, Elliot, the Lopez family, the Trombino family, Julie, Olivine, Marvin, Tony, Jeff, Janet, Doug, Jeff, Richard, and Niels. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. In God, you demand much, but promise that your yoke is easy. Guide us throughout our lives, keeping us ever mindful of the good news of your forgiving and renewing grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace of the Lord, all. Peace. Uh, you may be seated. Um, some good news that Peter shared with me. Uh, and while we were waiting to get connected. Um, uh, but uh, Niels has been able to get word out. It's complicated. Well, it's still complicated. We still need to pray. But word has gotten to the family. He's not home yet. But we need to continue to pray. So we'll uh, thank God for that, uh, that communication. Well, as we prepare our hearts to come to Christ's table, Luke tells us, the people came to Jesus from all directions, seeking healing and peace. We are the body of Christ, surrounded by the many needs of the world around us. So let us bring our tithes and offerings that these gifts may foster healing and encourage peace. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give God thanks, thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And now we give you thanks because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven who we'll forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. I made the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. I the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. I the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Sean, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth the people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. I would invite you all to stand. And I would like us for our blessing to let us pray the prayer of St. Francis as an offering that we will be faithful citizens of God's kingdom. Let us pray. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to life eternal. Amen. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you. 